What's up, YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin coming to you from the Big Blue Nation once again. And today, I was going to discuss with you the proper carrying techniques you need in order to make sure that your key lime thrives. Now, the scientific name for a key lime tree is Citrus Arantifolia. It does have several different names. I believe they call it the Mexican key lime, the bartender's lime, a West Indian lime, but I know it just as the key lime. As you can tell, I have mine in a pot. It's done relatively well in a pot. I wanted to grow it kind of as a bonsai, but this guy right here was a rescue plant. Home Depot was selling them in these really kind of metal, metallic, small pots. They were pretty deep, but they were really narrow and they had no drainage holes in them whatsoever. And when I found him, he was in literal soup. Like his container had no drainage hole, so it was just all full of water. And he was just drooped over the side. It looked like he had about give up on life. So I bought him. I uh, took him home and planted him and made sure that the pot that I put him in would have a drainage hole. Now don't forget, your citrus trees love water. They are an evergreen, so throughout the whole entire year, even if you're in a cold place, these guys need to keep their leaves. I believe with a lime tree, the cycle uh, for a leaf is about three years, so they can withstand some torment a little pressure and they'll hang out for about three years so they will not lose their leaves whatsoever and if you look in kind of closely you can tell these guys do have spikes on them i think that's what draws me to them so much i like the spikes the pins or whatever just like cacti so this is a great tree to have now other dwarf varieties that will do really great in pots along with the key lime the mexican key lime i believe these guys get to about 15 feet uh, around about that in a pot so if you want to keep them smaller just trim the roots about three quarters of the roots when you go to pull them out and then trim the top as well another variety that you can get is the barris lime that's a really popular one i believe that one's actually called the tahitian lime if i'm not mistaken they get to about 20 feet growing in a pot and then there's also palestinian lime that one, I believe, is the smallest one. I think they top out at around four to five feet, depending on what kind of situation you have them in. So they're great dwarf varieties right there as well. And then I want to say the kafar lime, kafir, kafar, uh, those guys, I think they get to be about a little bit around 10 feet, but they're a great kind of bushy variety as well. Now, with most lime trees, uh, they usually don't produce fruit to about three to six years, with full production going on around eight to 10 years. So, you know, this guy's about a year old. He won't produce anything for at least another two years, maybe even longer. It just depends. Now, as you can tell, the leaves kind of in the middle are this kind of dark, lime kind of green that's really what you're kind of shooting for with lime tree leaves these other leaves that are kind of younger that have the bright yellow to them this guy has had an issue with the water from where i rescued him i've only had him for about two months now i've had an issue of where to set him to make sure that he gets the right amount of light the lime trees just like any citrus tree love light they need to be in around at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight a day uh, maybe even more but just remember, if you buy if you bought them from a store, that's especially one that's kept them inside, you need to introduce them back into the sun slowly. Because if you throw them out into eight, ten hours of direct sunlight when you first buy them, you'll burn these leaves up, and you could end up killing the plant. So make sure uh, not only that you have a drainage hole in your pot, and that your plant is getting adequate water, but it's getting adequate sunlight too, and the right amounts. So make sure you introduce them slowly. Uh, but if you've bought them from a place and they've kept it outside, feel free to go ahead and just kind of keep it outside too. But uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. And now when I got him, I kind of set him on my front porch. And I think he had about three hours of direct sunlight for the first three or four days. And then I kind of set him back out where I really wanted him to go. Now, citrus trees are notorious for losing uh, magnesium. Now, I want to get into the substrate first before I get into that uh, magnesium afterthought. Uh, so if you do get a citrus tree, make sure you get the right kind of organic is your best bet a substrate for a citrus tree. miracle Grow and Fox Farm both have one that's ideal for like cacti and succulents and citrus. And that's really because citrus trees 
crave uh, specific key minerals and your regular potting soil and your organic raised bed stuff that's not going to have all that in there so you want to make sure you get a uh, substrate that is designed specifically for citrus trees or else your tree is not going to grow and it definitely will not produce any fruit so make sure that you're not giving it anything else now uh, with the yellowing leaves, uh, sometimes you can look at leaves on a citrus tree and they'll have kind of yellow spots in them or just spots all over it. That's usually indicative of them not uh, getting the right amount of nutrients they need. And even still, I use the miracle Grow cacti, succulent, and citrus substrate. And you can tell mine's kind of have a little bit of problem with it too. Now, uh, even though I've used that, it does have a problem with its magnesium intake. The easiest way to fix that is to get some Epsom salt and do about one to two tablespoons of Epsom salt per gallon of water and then just go ahead and uh, water your citrus trees with that mixture. Make sure you stir it up really well so it all dissolves in there and then just water your plant. Enough to where at least water is coming out of the bottom of the pot. That way you know that all roots have been saturated. And don't forget any roots that have not been saturated, that do not get water, especially for a couple of months, they will begin to die off. And uh, that can really damage your plant and limit the amount that it can take in for nutrients and water and whatnot. So it's very important that you water the entire pot. And uh, I do not keep a saucer underneath my pot just because they don't like really vigorously wet roots or wet feet all the time. So I let that run out and just go away. And then, uh, depending on the heat, uh, you may need to water your uh, lime tree at least once a day. Now, as you can tell, the way I did my planting is I'd used uh, about three quarters of the way of the cacti and succulent mix. And then I used uh, some organic compost that I put another quarter on. And then for the uh, top little inch, inch and a half, I put on some mulch, wood mulch. Now that is very beneficial to your lime tree or any of your citrus trees whatsoever uh, because, well, there's several reasons why. Especially in the heat of the day, the wood mulch will actually keep your uh, substrate adequately wet and make sure that it doesn't really kind of dry off very fast. So it will help your plant to be able to retain some water. And uh, so if you do have mulch on there, you won't have to water it as much. If you're really wondering about that, uh, you can kind of move some of your mulch back and then stick your finger down in there and see if you can fill around to the bottom of the soil. Now you can tell I got a little bit of watery kind of uh, substrate on there. So my guy, I watered him yesterday. He's really good now. It was really hot today and I probably should have given him a little spritz. But as I can tell, I always check to make sure that the substrate is adequately wet before I go ahead and add any more water to it. So we've covered the light source. Make sure they always get at least six to eight, maybe even ten hours of light a day, direct light at that and make sure if it's really hot out you get you water them at least once a day enough until the water comes out the bottom temperatures they do not like to be any colder than about 55 degrees some people say that you can get down to 50 but that's really fine line with that citrus trees do not like cold whatsoever so i would not expose mine anything lower than about 55 50 degrees now, usually around the winter time uh, to the fall, the colder parts of the year is really when they start producing a lot of their uh, fruit. And that's really when uh, fruit production is highest for the citrus trees. So that is kind of ironic. But as I live in Kentucky, I will be bringing mine in and set him underneath the um, artificial light out back to make sure he gets adequate sunlight the entire year and that the temperatures are right. Now, uh, they ideally do not like temperatures to be over 80, 85 degrees, but naturally that's gonna happen, especially if you live down south. So just be mindful of that, especially if you know it's gonna be really hot outside, I'd say about over 85 degrees, uh, that you may wanna take him and put him somewhere that it won't be in the direct heat of the day, kind of like in the hottest part of the day with direct sunlight beating down on them. Now they do like around 80 degrees, so if you know it's gonna be higher than 85, I would put him somewhere that they may be in a little bit of uh, shade under the hardest part of the day. So just kind of keep that in mind as well too. Now, these guys, all citrus fruit, if I'm not mistaken, is native to be about around the USDA zones 
around 10 and 11. So if you live anywhere that's under that, you know, for the rest of the United States, you will be having to bring yours in for the winter time as well. And I always bring mine in around uh, a little bit after September. I know August is really hot here. And for the most part, almost all of September has gotten to be really hot here as well. So about halfway through September, depending on what the weather's like, I will start to bring my citrus inside. Now keep in mind, they do like humidity and they do like water. So when you bring them in and it's getting ready to be winter time, you gotta remember that uh, your, ho your house is gonna be really hot. It's probably gonna be really dry as well. So you'll want to keep an adequate kind of drainage uh, with the pebble tray and water on that and set them on top so that as water evaporates around the tree, it'll kind of go up through the leaves. Now, as I said, you want to have a nice little flat tray with pebbles on top because you don't want your pot sitting there with the drainage hole to where all this water will be kind of sucked up in there because you can saturate your roots and drown your plant out or you can actually just uh, cause a lot of root rot as well. So make sure you set them on top of the pebbles and that the water is kind of below the pebble so that this isn't sucking up all the water. Now, you'll need a moisture meter or just use your finger and kind of stick it down in there. And if you can tell that about the first inch of soil is dry, I would go ahead and start watering your citrus again. Uh, you can also use a little spray bottle and mist it. And citrus trees are very particular about their water. Now, I always use distilled water. A lot of people will say you can use filtered water, but that's not the best idea unless you have the zero water filter because that will actually get rid of all the chemicals like the fluoride, chlorine, or anything else like that that will actually hurt your leaves. So your best bet is to use distilled water, and that's really cheap. You can get it for about 80 cents, 89 cents a gallon at Myers, and that's what I always do. If not, you'll have a lot of discolored leaves. Now, depending on what is wrong with your leaves, uh, there are different things that you can do for that. The pests that I've come to experience with citrus trees, there has been scale with lime. That's been the hardest. If you ever have scale, you'll notice little bumps on your tree. They won't move, they're stationary, and they just don't look right. They kind of look like an insect would, and they have this sharp covered shell over top of them. Um, they're really hard to get off. If you ever have a problem with scale, depending on which scale you have, you may need Mother Nature to get involved to actually kind of help you with that. And what I mean by that is you can get ladybugs, you can order them offline. I think around 11 to 1200 ladybugs is around like 10 or 11 dollars. Have them shipped to your house, and get what's called a butterfly cage. Basically it's just a uh, like a hamper with holes in it that you can kind of set your plant inside of, release the ladybugs in there, and they'll actually eat the scale and help you out with that. Spider mites are notorious for lime trees and any kind of citrus also. With spider mites, you can use just a, a blast of water to actually knock them off. What I'll do is I'll take them out back and I'll turn my garden hose to shower and I'll make sure I spray the entire plant down under every single leaf, over every single stem, front and back on the leaves, and just all around and soak the soil and the substrate and the mulch too to make sure you knock them off. They have no real way of actually attaching themselves to the tree, so just a simple blast of water will come and knock them off. And typically that's what Mother Nature does with her plants as well. A good old fashioned rain or thunderstorm will come along and knock those guys right off and they'll be fine. If you've noticed that you've done that maybe once or twice and they're still around, you can take a uh, washcloth and soak it with isopropyl rubbing alcohol and go over each leaf front and back and the stems and the alcohol will actually kill the spider mites and knock them off as well. Millie bugs can be a problem a little bit too with them. You'll notice them because they're kind of white little powdery looking dots. They'll attach themselves to it. Rubbing alcohol is best with that too. Just again, saturate your washcloth with isopropyl alcohol and go over each leaf wherever you see a millie bug and uh, you'll be able to take care of them that way too. Now, there are other problems like with caterpillars and worms and stuff that will actually burrow down into the substrate and attach themselves and start drinking draining your leaves and stems of their valuable nutrients. There is an organic mixture, Monterey BT, and I will show you a picture of that. Um, it's almost worth its weight in gold because you will use about one tablespoon of the Monterey BT a solution, and then you'll mix it up to a gallon of water, and then you spray the leaves all over, 
and it will fight or combat any kind of worms or caterpillars or anything like that that's also eating on your lime tree as well. Again, that's organic, uh, so it's very helpful and very beneficial for your tree, so I recommend using that as well. And then aphids. If you notice that you have a lot of gnats, fungus gnats, aphids, or anything like that coming out of the soil, usually the mulch will kind of deter them because they like to live in the first inch to two inches of your substrate, especially the substrate that's been really wet almost all the time. They have a field day with that. But what they'll do is they'll burrow down in there, lay eggs, and then they'll start eating on the plant's roots and damaging the roots as well. So that will kill the plant from the bottom up. So if you don't feel like using mulch, you can use another product that I always use called Natnix. And basically all that it is is superheated glass that you apply about an inch to two inches over like I have my mulch and you cover it all and it will it is so jagged that it will actually puncture the exoskeleton of any pests uh, and kill them almost right away and anything that it doesn't kill it sets up a barrier so that it actually can't get into your substrate right there and start laying eggs in it as well and say that uh, you do have a plant that you've left outside all summer if you put that stuff over it they won't be able to get into your substrate but if anything goes under uh, your pot and through your drainage holes and lays eggs up there, it actually won't be able to come out the top. What they're used to doing is that they'll hatch and then they'll come straight out the top. But the anatnix will actually puncture their exoskeleton. So just be very mindful because uh, with any kind of plant, you're going to have some kind of pest. A citrus, they do have a plethora of pests. So you'll just want to kind of bring them in. I always at least go over my plant at least once or twice a week to make sure I don't see any kind of bite marks on it or any kind of wrinkled up looking leaves that may look like they may, I don't know, be thirsty or just not have enough nutrients to them. Because if you see any kind of leaves like that, you probably do have a pest that is kind of working its way through your plant. So you do want to use an organic means to defeat them. Neem oil can also be a beneficial product, but that stuff actually does stink. And a little bit of that goes a long way. So other than that, it is important that you do water them because plants that have been well taken care of, they will be able to kind of fight off the pests better than plants that don't have enough water, adequate sunlight, the right temperatures, the right kind of top dressings, or the right kind of substrate as well. All that mixed together, <coughs> your plant should be able to kind of fend for itself and take care of itself. So at least check them out every once or twice or three times a week, just whatever you feel comfortable with, and look it over and make sure it's not struggling with anything like that, or that it doesn't have any kind of silky filaments hanging off that may remind you of spider mites, because those are harder to detect too. And that's the best way to kind of look through those with different light sources to make sure that you don't see any kind of spider web looking things through your leaves, uh, because that's the first indication that you probably do have spider mites. Now, your citrus trees, they do prefer slightly acidic soils. They like about a mixture of uh, 6.1 to 7.8. Again, the Epsom salt, uh, when you water it with that, will actually help your plant uh, with the acidity as well. So keep that in mind. Another thing that I've noticed with the lime trees in general, uh, they have very vigorous roots. And again, that's why I didn't want to put them in a bonsai pot because they are really small and they're not very deep at all. And the roots can grow really fast and actually kind of choke your plant out. So if you don't have an adequate substrate, your roots will begin to kind of wrap around the pot several times and become root bound, choke your plant out and just kill your plant. Now, once you get your plant, make sure that you knock as much substrate off and look at the roots and kind of trim them back. You're allotted about three quarters of the, sub, of the roots to remove them. So as long as you leave about a quarter of the roots, of the original roots on, you'll be good. But just keep in mind that they are very, very vigorous growers and they can kind of choke the plant out. So make sure that you kind of trim them back and go from there. When it comes to fertilizing, always, 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 if you can, try to use an organic compost mix because that's going to have more of the organic trace minerals in it that your plant is required to have. And keep in mind, if you do have your plant in a pot, pots always, uh, especially when you water them, the water, fresh water will come in and push all the nutrients and fertilizer out of the pot. So you need to be at least uh, fertilizing your lime tree at least once a month, if not maybe about every two to three weeks, especially if they are in a pot because it will seep on through and keep going. So you may think that you have enough fertilizer in there, but especially if you water a lot, it'll just push it on through. Lime trees, citrus trees in general, like a lot of nitrogen. So make sure out of the NPK 
decay that the nitrogen is going to be higher than the rest. You want something maybe around 20, 10, 10 of your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So make sure that first number is going to be higher than the rest because citrus do like a lot of leaves and stems and the nitrogen will actually help them develop more of the leaves and stems and then the rest will take care of your flowers, roots, and just all around general well-being uh, for your plant. So like I said, just make sure you fertilize them at least once a month throughout the entire year. Now, uh, even when you bring them in for the summertime, still fertilize them at least once a month. Now, make sure you read the directions uh, because some will say that you can use maybe about three or four months of fertilization. If they say that, I usually kind of dilute that by half. That way you can stretch it out through the entire year because your plant is an evergreen. If it's citrus, they're going to need to feed the entire length of the year. So make sure you are fertilizing them at least once a month especially when you bring them in for the winter time. Now with the rest of your plants, they're going to go dormant. So you don't need to be fertilizing them at all during the winter time. The non-growing season from fall to winter, you don't have to fertilize them and you barely, rarely have to water them at all. I mean, with some of my plants like the cacti, I may water them once a month, but life will proceed as normal like it is in the growing season for your citrus. So you need to be watering them you need to make sure their humidity is okay, and you need to be fertilizing them at least once a month during the winter time as well. So keep that in mind also. Now, uh, one of my friends that actually turned me on to the citrus trees, he was telling me that really the lime trees, and I believe lemon trees also, are not compatible with lollipopping. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but basically it is when you have a single stem that goes up, and then you kind of cut the rest of the uh, side stems off, to make sure that there is no branches or anything growing below the canopy and then they'll have like a, a circular area where the rest of the branches and leaves and the produce and everything else kind of forms on top and the, basically it will look like a lollipop i'm not sure exactly why but uh, they're not very good to lollipop so make sure you don't try to remove all the stems down here and hope that a mass of everything will grow on top because that is not good for your uh, citrus trees at all now keep in mind, you will actually have to prune your trees. You will probably have to prune the trees that grow towards the bottom, and that is just because general fruit production, when they produce their fruit, it is really heavy. So if you get them towards the end or just anything towards the bottom, it will weigh your branch down, and then you'll have your uh, fruit sitting in the substrate and getting all dirty and inviting rot in. So make sure that you remove kind of the lower branches, and then you can leave ones that are kind of midway up, uh, but I would just remove the bottom ones that are closest to the ground so you don't have fruit that is sitting in the mud and inviting rot in. And you'll also want to kind of uh, prune any branches that kind of cross each other also. And that is for the same reason. As they grow, they'll kind of rub against each other and create friction and then create an entry point for where disease and rot can enter your plant as well. So make sure if you have branches that are crossing and touching each other that uh, you remove at least one of those so that they no longer rub each other e anymore and will bring rot into your plant or any other kind of disease. And I spoke earlier about the trace minerals that your citrus tree is going to need. I believe it's iron, zinc, and manganese as well as a little bit of magnesium also. So as long as you have iron, zinc, manganese, and magnesium in there, uh, that is the elements that your plant is going to crave. So we talked about uh, the magnesium with the Epsom salt. Uh, that's the best way of delivering that. And then again, any kind of substrate that is designed for your citrus plants, that will cover the rest as well. And as we talked earlier, fertilization is very important, especially for citrus plants. They are notoriously heavy feeders. So make sure you're going and at least feeding every two to three, maybe in four, every four weeks. Uh, I will feed mine about every three weeks. I think every four weeks is a little bit long because they are very heavy feeders. Uh, so make sure you address that as well because especially if you want yours to flower and uh, produce fruit, you're going to need a lot of feeding, a lot of food and nutrition to actually keep up with that and provide you with the flowering and the fruit that you want. So make sure you do feed your plants because they will need it.
Now, with the dwarf varieties or just any kind of other lime or citrus varieties, you want to make sure that you don't really cover up the graft area with soil. The top substrate, like mulch, will be okay if you kind of cover it up a little bit. Uh, but keep in mind that you don't really want to cover that up a whole lot, especially with soil, because you can kind of rot and bring other disease and fungi or anything else into that plant. So kind of keep that right above where the mulch sits because that's not going to be doing yourself any favors with that either. And don't forget, uh, whenever you're selecting your pot, you may want to get something that it's not very heavy. Now I've had this guy sit outside all summer long, so I've made sure that he's been in a terracotta kind of clay pot. A lot of people will say, well, that's not very beneficial for your plant uh, because terracotta tends to wick water away from the roots. But as long as you're watering it at least once a day, uh, especially if it's hot outside, your plant will be okay. But keep in mind with terracotta, they can wick the water away from your plants. So if you're just watering it maybe once or twice a week, your plant's not going to get the right amount of water that it needs. So, but also... Keep that in mind whenever you have to uh, make sure that you bring your plant in for the winter time. If you've got a really huge plant on top, very heavy terracotta or glass or ceramic pot will be really harder to move. So keep that in mind as well. And then as I was saying, these, these trees are very, very great trees to have. They produce fruit. So if you're one that tends to drink a lot or eat a lot, these trees will be great for you. They are very beautiful trees to have. I mean, they flower, they produce fruit. Um, I mean, they have a gorgeous color on them. So they're a great all around tree to have. So just make sure that you take care of your citrus plant or your lime tree because they are a wonderful tree to keep. Like I said, I always like to keep mine kind of like in a smaller side so I can sit it on the front porch. With a dwarf variety, you'll be able to produce a plethora of fruit, but they do need a lot of attention. Not as much as your roses or anything like that, but they will need some loving. So just don't plant them and forget them and expect to get a whole lot from them. They do take a little bit to produce fruit, but they're well worth it. They can get to be a decent size, so make sure if you do keep them in the containers that you transplant them each year that you think they might actually be kind of outgrowing their pot. And as I was saying, the roots are vigorous growers. So uh, when spring comes around next year, I will transplant him. And if you don't have a pot that you're wanting to increase the size in, make sure you just kind of trim the roots back to about uh, three quarters of the roots. And then you can put him back in the same pot and then use uh, the right substrate that you always use for your citrus plant and everything will be okay. And then again, if you want to, just trim the leaves up top and always, always, always sanitize your pruning shears. If you're just trimming the roots to the top and the uh, branches, you don't need to sanitize between the two. But if you go from one lime tree to another lime tree, even if it's the same species, always make sure you sanitize your pruning shears in between the plants because diseases can split between plants. So make sure you always sanitize with warm soap and water or alcohol or peroxide, something like that, that will actually clean your plant up uh, and your pruning shears as well because you don't want to spread disease between plants. Well guys, I think that's really all I want to say about the lime tree. Like I said, they're great trees to have. They will teach kids or just any other uh, beginning gardeners what they need in order to produce fruit and how lime trees, citrus trees, and all that grow. So you will have a little bit of work for you, but not a whole lot and the benefits are just outrageous. Uh, the fruit, the smell, the look, uh, they're just gorgeous all around and tasteful too. So uh, make sure you leave me a comment and let me know if I didn't answer any questions that you might have. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys have a good one. Take it easy and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.